Hello and welcome to this foundation series uh, by Connecting the Dots. In uh, today's lecture, let us understand the fascinating phenomenon of electromagnetism and the magnetic effect of electric current. So in the next few lectures, we will be talking about the various phenomena. We will be viewing experiments and demonstrations and understand the practical applications of electromagnetism. So let's get started. Let us start the discussion with a demonstration. And then there will be a series of questions that we will try to answer. A copper wire or, or copper is not a magnetic material. Uh, what it means is it is not attracted by a magnet. So I have a, a fairly powerful magnet in my hand. These are neodymium magnets, but it has absolutely no force of attraction on a piece of copper. So copper is an excellent conductor of electricity, but it is not a magnetic material. So there is no force of attraction between the copper wire and the magnet. But what happens when we when we pass an electric current through the copper wire? And how do we pass an electric current? With a couple of batteries. When we pass an electric current through the wire, you can see clearly that there is a force of attraction. And when the current stops flowing, there is no longer a force of attraction. So once the current stops flowing, there is no longer a force of attraction. The answer to the first question is clearly that when an electric current started flowing through the copper wire, it was converted into a magnet. The copper wire had a magnetic field around it. Now, can we answer the question, why is this called an electromagnet? It is called an electromagnet. The name implies that it is an electric current flowing through the copper wire that caused it to become a magnet. So it is a, it's the magnetic effect of electricity which we illustrated, hence the name electromagnet. Why would we call it a temporary magnet? Now that again is quite easy to understand. It remained a magnet only as long as a current was flowing through it. When an electric current was not flowing through the wire, it was no longer a magnet. So it's possible to switch on and switch off this magnet. Hence, we can call it a temporary magnet. Now the next question, does it have a north and south pole? We are all told that a magnet has a north and south pole. Every magnet has a north and south pole. The magnets I have in my hand will have a north and south pole. No, any magnet, no matter how big or how small, will have a north and south poles. But the question is, does an electromagnet also have north and south poles? Remember, an electromagnet was created when we passed an electric current through the copper wire. Now, how do we test whether an electromagnet has north and south poles? Well, a simple experiment should answer the question. In this setup, we have a, a freely suspended magnet. It is just suspended by a wooden support. It is free to swing. And like I did before, if I bring a copper wire near the magnet, there is no force of attraction or repulsion because copper is not magnetic. Then again, if I pass an electric current through it, you have seen that it becomes a magnet. So let's do that you can see that there is a force of repulsion. It's being pushed away. 
but when i turn it around there is a force of attraction there is a force of attraction and when i turn it away there is a force of a repulsion so repulsion attraction repulsion and attraction now that would be possible only if the electromagnet this piece of copper wire which became an electromagnet also had north and south poles so what this experiment tells us is that an electromagnet also has north and south poles because we could clearly see attraction on one side and repulsion on the other so what we have established so far is that a uh, copper wire uh, an electric conductor which has a current flowing through it has a magnetic field it is an electromagnet it is a temporary magnet and electromagnets also have north and south poles let us study just one example of use of electromagnets and then we can look at a few more examples watch this video and tell me what you think what you saw was a crane it picked up pieces of uh, scrap iron lying by the side and dumped it in the crane now it is some kind of a magnet that's quite clear it was able to pick up all the pieces of iron and dump it in the crane now the question is was it a permanent magnet or a, a temporary magnet that's a question that i would like you to think about and we think of other applications of electromagnets frankly there are so many applications of electromagnets we are surrounded by them in fact i am in a studio recording this video i have in front of me a camera or tv screen a computer there is an air conditioner uh, working in the corner over there i have my mobile phone on the desk here every one of these devices has electromagnets so it is hard to think of modern electrical appliances without electromagnets so they are all around us and so it is an extremely important phenomenon and a lot of things that we use many gadgets that we use in our lives use electromagnetism let us understand some of the differences and similarities between magnets and electromagnets we have seen a couple of similarities already through simple experiments one is that both permanent magnets and electromagnets have north and south poles and we also observed that like poles repel each other and unlike poles attract each other so those are the similarities what are the differences an electromagnet is a temporary magnet and we've seen that it is a magnet only when electric current is flowing through the conductor they behave like magnets when current is flowing uh, when current stops flowing through the wire they are no longer magnets the second important difference is the polarity 
of the electromagnet can be changed by changing the direction of the current. If you reverse the direction of the current in the conductor, north and south poles get flipped or reversed. And the third difference is you can vary the strength of an electromagnet. You can make it a stronger magnet or a weaker magnet simply by changing the, the current in the coils or by the number of turns in the coils. Let me explain what the second and the third differences mean. If current flows in this direction, then north and south poles, uh, you know, it, it will have north and south poles. But if I were to reverse the direction of the current in this uh, copper coil, the north and south poles of this electromagnet will be flipped or reversed, which is not possible to do with a permanent magnet. The other thing is, you observe how many turns this coil has. I can make it a stronger electromagnet by simply increasing the number of turns or decreasing the number of turns will make it a weaker electromagnet. Finally, I have used three volts, two batteries of 1.5 volts each to produce an electric current here. But increasing the current in, this, in these coils will make it a, a stronger magnet. So it's possible in, in a couple of different ways to make this a stronger or weaker magnet, but you cannot change the strength of a permanent magnet. So these are some of the differences between electromagnets and permanent magnets. A magnetic field as we have seen in the case of permanent magnets, has direction and magnitude. It is very important to recognize that it is a, a vector quantity. It is very important to recognize that a magnetic field has magnitude and direction. Now let us look at a simple way in which we can determine the direction of the magnetic field in a, in a piece of wire carrying a current. This is a straight wire or a straight current carrying conductor and current is flowing in this direction. If that is the case, if you were to hold the current carrying conductor with your right hand and extend your thumb such that the thumb is pointing in the direction of the current, then the other four fingers, these four fingers here, which have curled around the wire, will give you the direction of the magnetic field. So you observe here on this paper that the magnetic field is in that direction. And that is the same direction pointed by the fingers. Notice also that the magnetic field lines are concentric circles with the wire or the conductor as the center of the uh, concentric circles. So this is called the right hand thumb rule which can be used to determine the direction of the magnetic field for a straight current carrying conductor. So let's look at a short video. You'll understand this better. Please notice that there are four compasses that have been arranged around a wire. Let us see what happens to these compasses when a current flows through the wire. Now, this is a situation where there is a, a wire here through which no current is flowing right now. And all the compasses arranged around the wire, there are four compasses, are in the 
north south direction remember there is a copper wire there is no current flowing through it and therefore there is no magnetic field around it all the compasses around the wire are pointing in the north south direction so let's see what happens when current flows through the wire current is off right now current is on now you can see that they have arranged themselves like a circle around the wire so this is what is meant by magnetic field lines being circular around the current carrying conductor and if the current is switched off they go back to their original north south direction right and this is a simple demonstration of how uh, a straight wire carrying a current has a magnetic field around it and it can be given by simply holding the current carrying conductor like i am holding the pen with your right hand have the thumb point in the direction of the current and the remaining four fingers give you the direction of the magnetic field around the wire let us now look at the magnetic field of a circular loop a current carrying conductor which is bent into a loop using the same right hand thumb rule you can determine that these are the magnetic field lines produced by a circular loop in which a current is flowing you can compare it with the magnetic field lines of a permanent bar magnet and see that there are some similarities in fact we will come back to it in a little while observe here again what happens to the iron filings when current starts flowing through the coils there is a clear alignment of the iron filings or iron powder when current is flowing otherwise there is a random pattern random distribution the magnetic field lines are clearly illustrated when current is flowing through the copper coil so this is how we would represent the magnetic field lines of a solenoid solenoid is a is a conductor it could be a copper wire or an aluminum wire which is bent into a a coil or a shape like this so this is what we call a solenoid so the magnetic field lines around the solenoid would look like this and remember even an electromagnet has north and south poles and you can use the right hand thumb rule to determine uh where the north pole is compare the magnetic field lines of a solenoid with a a bar magnet they look very similar they look identical in fact um it's quite clear that the characteristics are the same the lines appear to go from the north pole to the south pole outside the magnet the magnetic field lines never intersect each other uh there are more lines where the field is strongest all of these characteristics apply to both an electromagnet in in a solenoid or a permanent bar magnet so let's quickly summarize what we have uh, studied so far we first saw through a series of simple demonstrations that a current carrying conductor created a magnetic field around it it was a temporary magnet uh we also saw that it has north and south poles through a simple demonstration uh i showed you one application of an electromagnet and i left you with one question uh why should it be an electromagnet why not a permanent magnet we discussed the numerous applications of electromagnets around us then we discussed about the direction 
of the magnetic field lines for an electromagnet for a straight wire or a solenoid using the right hand rule uh, and then i compared the magnetic field lines of a solenoid and a bar magnet and they are identical looking so that ends our short video on electromagnetism uh, watch for other videos where we will solve some complex uh, concept application questions thanks for watching